everyone. Today we're going to continue our discussion on the theories of essence qi, blood, body, fluid, and mind. So in this today's class is our last session of this theories. So the last part we're going to focus on the body fluids and the mind. So today we're going to focus on body fluid and mind. Okay. Body fluids. The first we're going to discuss is a definition. What's, what are body fluids? Body fluids refer to the basic substance that make up the body and maintain the life activities. It includes the all fluids in the body, except the blood and the essence in organs. So as you can see from this definition, the categories of body fluids is quite is actually a very large range. So actually the body fluids refers to all liquid form. The liquid form doesn't have to be the one you can see. So that's why we said it includes all fluids except the blood and the essence. The reason why we need to is Except the exclude the blood and essence because body fluids, blood and essence are all basic systems in liquid form, so they are quite similar. That's why we need to exclude them. They all in in, in nature. So compared with qi, qi is something we can't see in young nature and blood essence body fluids they are in and also they can benefit they can generate each other so we can when we discuss body fluids is the liquid systems excluding the blood and essence Body fluids is widely in stores in all organs, in physical body, all over the body, orifice and tissues, organs. So you can see the body fluids all over the all, all, all over the body. Previously in the last class we said the blood. Is the vehicle of qi movement, and here the body fluid also a kind of vehicle for the qi movement. The body fluid and the blood is quite are quite similar. The next we're going to discuss is where the body fluids come from. It's very from the definition of. It's quite simple, it only said it's from the ingested food or drinks. So this means also very similar to qi. This indicates that something from your food, from the water you drink, that's actually from the middle jaw, from the skin and stomach function. In Huang Di Nei Ji. It described as this after drinking, the water enters the stomach and essence qi is extracted from the, the water and it is and it's transported outwards by the spleen qi that is responsible for spreading and transporting the essence qi of the, the body. So here they always use essence and qi. In the philosophy, at the beginning, when we discuss essence, we have talked that essence and qi, when we use together, they actually refer the same stuff. Qi or essence doesn't really matter. It's quite similar in here. We don't separate them. So when they said essence 
qi. It actually refers to qi. And through the spring, the essence qi of the water is sent, sent out into the lungs. Through the lungs function of regulating the waterways, it is further transported downwards into the blood. After being worked together by the stomach, spleen, and lung, the water essence could then be distributed to all the body, moved, moved together with the qi of all the organs and meridians. So you see from this clause, you see the, the body fluids, how they distribute it is from the food, from the metal gel, from the, the water, the liquid, from the food and from the drink. The metal gel absorbs them. And here it says that the, the water essence, what does it mean for by water essence? If we actually, in Huang Di Neji, it just want to emphasize the water we drink in, the one we can use, or the body need to use, as the fluid in the body, and then the waste, you go to the blood. So the water essence only refers to the water essence only refers to or only excludes the the water waste. So in this situation, we need to think about when we drink the water from your mouth. The water you need to separate them. One is the parts we, the body need, and the other part is the body doesn't need. So the what the the parts the body doesn't need become the waste, and then the, go to the bladder to be go to the kidney to generate the bladder to generate the urine stored in the bladder. So this is also the same theories, the same way of thinking. In yin and yang theories, yin and yang is inseparable. They always together. Wherever you say something, there's yin, there's yang there. So the water is in a liquid form. When we discuss the yin yang theories, we always use water and fire to use as an example of the the the. the the examples to indicate yin or yang. So water is yin in general. But in this yin categories, when we discuss water specifically, water can be divided into yin and yang. So the water essence and the water waste. Here they, they said the water essence could be distributed to all over the world, all over the body. That's all the body fluids we're discussing now. So as you can see from this demonstration, this, this picture here, the food and drink from the left corner, the left upper corner, the food and drink from our diet, it goes to the stomach go to the small intestine, go to the large intestine. And these mostly go to the spleen, the sp from the spleen function, because the spleen is in charge of the, the food, or from in charge of the acquired essence, acquired qi from the middle jaw. So this middle jaw, which is the spleen and stomach, is where we absorb nutrition, absorb Qi and blood, and also here is where we absorb body fluids from the spring. And then the, the water, the liquid from these, the spring will separate them, will digest them. The one we need to use become body fluids. Then it will be transported to the lung. This is from the function of the spring. When you go back to the, the nose, the spring got the function of rising. So the spring can rise something, can move something upwards. Where they move to is, is the fluid. Spring needs to move the fluid to the lung. 
and the lung have the function of descending. So the lung can descend to the lung qi, which bring down the body fluids in order to descend lung qi. Where we have discussed previously that wherever the, the qi need to move, we need to have a vesicle. The vesicle can be the blood, can be the what the body fluids now we're discussing. So the lung can descend the lung qi to the kidney. The kidney stay at the bottom also can transfer the qi upwards. That's also the yin and yang theories. When we discuss the, the relationship between zhang organs, especially the, the relationship between the heart and the kidney, yes, we, we have explained that in details why the heart fire will go down to the kidney and why the kidney water will go up, will move up to the heart, control the heart fire. So these are quite similar. The lung qi goes down, the kidney qi move up, and the kidney qi doesn't have to move the lung only. And they move where the pathway, that's the theories we discussed before, san jiao. San jiao, sometimes they also trans translate it as triple, triple warmer. San is three, three, or triple in Chinese. The san jiao is an organ, it's one of the fu organ where the qi, blood, body fluids travels. So it's the pathway of the body fluids. And from here, the lung, the body fluids go to the lung, doesn't only descend to the kidney. When we discuss the lung's function, we had the fun the lung has the function of dispersing. The dispersing it actually means the body fluids go to the lung, and then the lung can disperse. All the body fluids, the body fluid, the the lung can disperse the body fluids to all over the all over the body, all over the organs to nourish the organs, to give them the basic substance for their physio physiological function. So these are the lung function, the, the from the spleen. From the, the lung to the kidney, and also these all the fluids, Huang Di Nei it described as water essence. So where's the waste? The waste it, when they go to the kidney, lung and kidney are the organs in charge of the water metabolism. So the kidney will and from the waste, the, the waste of the water in the urine and stored in the bladder. So that's the, the whole metabolism, the whole body fluid metabolism in our human body. How the body fluids be distributed to the different organs mainly related to the function of spleen, lung, kidney, liver, and san jiao. So if in the test ask you, can you explain the distribution of body fluid? Then you need to explain well what is the spleen function in this process. What's the lung function in this process? What's the kidney function? What's the liver function? And what's the san jiao function in this process? So the spring is mostly function. The, the spring function mostly related to absorb the qi, which is from the food and water. And the spring also can rise. 
and move the body fluids upwards to the, the lung. And the lung can disperse the water to different organs. Also, the lung can disperse the water and descend the water to the kidney. That's also why in acupuncture, in Chinese medicine theories, we always we always say that the lung in charge of the the water movement, and the lung is the 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 top part of the water. The kidney, the kidney. The, key, the, the function of the kidney also in charge of the water metabolism. The description of slightly difference between the lung from the kidney, but they all related to water. If you need more details for this, you, you should go back to the previous slides when we discussed Zhangfu theories. Okay, in this condition, the in order to get the water distributed well. What we need here for the kidney is the, the kidney yin and kidney yang. The liver, the liver is in charge of the qi circulation. The, all these circulation based on qi. Although the qi is it moves via body fluids as a vesicle, as a vesicle to the lung and and the last one is San Jiao. San Jiao is where the body fluids, where the qi moves, is the pathway of them. So the whole process happens in San Jiao. That's also why we said San Jiao, the, when, we, this, when we introduce San Jiao theories, we introduce two schools. One school it says the, from the location. Upper jaw, middle jaw, and lower jaw according to the location. The other school we introduce is San Jiao, is the pathways of qi and blood or water move, where qi, blood, water moves. So San Jiao is all over, the, all over the body. In this metabolism of the water, for the, of the body fluids, Sanjiao is considered as the pathway of the water where the water and qi moves. So also from this picture we can see where the body fluids come from, mostly from the food, from the water, and from the middle jaw, because the middle jaw of the spleen and stomach, they absorb the food, the water we drink. So that's from the middle chunk. The distribution of the body fluids. The distribution of the body fluids can... There's another aspect here, we didn't write here. The body fluids is distributed to all the, the body to different organs. But here we discuss is the urine and sweating, but also the body fluids go to the stool. So it's actually three here, urine, sweating and stool. That's the, the main form of the, the body fluids goes out of the body. That's also why if someone they sweat too much, then they might have constipation or might have dry stool. Or in some condition, in some case, patient will have 
diarrhea. And in some diarrhea, how do we treat the diarrhea? Diarrhea, the loose to all the diarrhea, it's actually the, there's too much water, too much body fluids in the in, intestine, in the large intestine. So in this condition, because they came from the one source, that if the body fluids goes too much to the large intestine, in the other way, it will be reduced. So sometimes in the treatment, we can use Chinese herbal medicine or acupuncture treatments to increase the urination, to increase the volume of the urine, and then can stop the diarrhea because the body fluids, if the body fluids go to the urine, as the urine form, then the body fluids in the large intestine will reduce. And that's how to treat some of the diarrhea. The function of the body fluids, the two functions of body fluids, moisture and nourishing. So the moist is the liquid to moist the organ. To nourish, that's where the qi, it's a physical of qi, can move the nutrition qi, can move the defense qi to different organs to nourish them. Body fluids also can transform into blood. So when we discussed blood last time, we said this nutrition qi is a component of the blood. And then there's another blood the, in the liquid form that they don't move. They need, when we discuss the blood, we separate them into yin and yang. Yang, because it's a nutrition qi, which can move the blood, which can move the blood and also a component of the blood. And that's in blood, that's the liquid blood. Where does the liquid blood come from? It's from the body fluid. And the, the body fluids also the source of the blood. The last function we didn't write here also the body fluid, the function of the body fluids can balance yin and yang. The reason why we said so it's actually because the body fluids the balancing yin and yang here is more related, more focused on the body temperature or the the body, the sweating. So the to maintain a certain body temperature in the body, it's actually we use the the function sweating. For instance, in some of it the when the climate is very hot, we sweat more. As we sweat, the body fluids, we, as we sweat, the body fluids carry out or take off some extra heat in the body to maintain certain body temperature. So that's the balance of yin and yang. The last function is to, to assist the, the waste. So if someone have constipation or lacks body fluids, they might have constipation. They might have dry stool. So these are, that's, that's why in some treatments, we're going to benefit, we're going to tonify the body fluids to assist the constipation. So that's body fluids. Body fluids also can refer to the other fluids when they specifically go to different Orifice, then it will relate to the 
five elements theories with the Zhang Fu organs related to which often overthink, such as the sweating is related to the heart, uh, the mucus from the nasal mucus from the nose related to the lung, the saliva related to the spleen and kidney, or uh, the tears related to the liver. So if some for instance, if sometimes I saw one patient before, she told me that whenever there's a wind, no matter in indoor or outdoor, whenever there's, there's wind, she she teared. Whenever she feel there's wind, she tears a lot. But if there is no no wind, she she didn't tear a lot. So for this kinds of case, how do we treat them? Or how do we treat? How do we see? How do we analyze? This kind of symptoms. It's actually from the the orifice, the tears related to the lung uh, to the liver. So the tears related to the livers and also the, the tears from the eyes. So we will so in the treatments we will focus on the liver to recover the the liver function of the liver. And this kind of patient you also can find some other symptoms in the liver or some other symptoms related to liver such as irritation or sometimes they got it in their menopause age so these are also the dysfunction of liver the last aspect we're going to discuss here is the mind the mind we're not going to focus on there mm. So we will more focus from this series, we will more focus on essence, qi, blood and body fluids, especially for qi, qi is one of the most important substance or aspect we're going to discuss because everything is from qi. That's also why in initially at the beginning we said that the human being is from the qi, from the gathering of qi and all the physiological function is the transformation is the result of the transformation of qi that's also why blood body fluids are coming from qi you can see from the the sources of them they all from middle jiao from the food from the nutrition the middle jiao changed them into qi which is acquired qi this acquired qi, it can be separated into body fluids, into blood, which is a red color. And who changed it into red color is the heart. So that's everything based on qi and blood theories. For the mind, as you can see from the lights, actually I put the spirit and mind there. The reason why we put spirit here is actually because the translation, the original translation, or in previously there's many translations they translate as spirit, which is true in Mandarin, we call spirit. But why we use mind here? It's actually the, the quite similar. The reason for the spirit in Chinese medicine or in acupuncture theories refers to consciousness and thinking. Thinking activities includes the psych psychological activities such as emotions, thoughts and personalities. So in Chinese medicine when we discuss spirit, whenever we discuss spirit, we actually refer to consciousness. And thinking activities or the, your, your emotion your thoughts your personalities and the reason why we use the mind the mind the definition of the mind is quite closer quite close to to this definition and spirit especially in South Africa sometimes people always 
misunderstand to spiritual. Spirit in Chinese math, as we discussed in the history, Chinese method has separated from medical and spiritual from very early, from Huang Di Nei Ji, which is which was 2,500 years ago, we separate them was from spiritual and medical. In Chinese medicine, in acupuncture, we only focus on the medical, we don't discuss anything related to spiritual. Last year, we, we actually discussed quite a lot with the students last year, and uh, but in the test, still many of them write spiritual. So that's something not there. You, you don't only see from the words we use, because Chinese medicine and acupuncture were translated from Mandarin to English. The words we use, the bridge is more close to the to the direct translation. But sometimes we don't want you to misunderstood. The spirit in Chinese medicine is spiritual. Okay. So whenever we say spirit, sometimes they, they call the heart spirit. If someone they the and the and the anxiety, they don't feel safe. The anxi the anxiety they think a lot. No review says that the the patients heart spirit is the disturbing so, but this when we say the spirit is not spiritual we just want to say that the the heart the heart is not calm enough that's why they feel anxiety the the thinking activity of the patient is not calm enough or too active hyperactive that's why they feel anxiety so we use the spirit to describe those kinds of activities is nothing related to the spiritual okay so the spirit we only going to introduce in very briefly and the source of the Spirit or the mind is from the essence, from qi, blood, and body fluids. These are the fundamental substance where the mind comes from. It's, it's very similar with the thinking activities, the consciousness. We need the qi, we need the blood, we need the body fluids to function well. And also the function of the spirit, the function of the mind, regulating the metabolism of essence, qi, blood, and body fluid, regulating the zhangfu, is a physiological function, is a logical function, and then not in human life activities. So from these functions, you can see the mind or the spirit we still use, or the thinking activities, what we Discussing here is when we discuss individuals, the, the essence, the qi, the blood, the body fluids, they function well and then um, they generate into each other, they help each other. But what's in charge of them, we call it the mind, which is your psychological activities, something from the, or the consciousness. That's the, the mind. This is sometimes if you go more in the details to the theories, it become more complicated. And this is not the, the one we're going to focus. So for spirit, for the mind, what you need to understand is you just need to know. Is the first is not spiritual. Nothing related to spiritual stuff. The second is the mind is from the essence, from the qi, from the blood and body fluid. If you remember this, that's enough for the 
the theories. In the last part, we're going to discuss the relationship between qi and blood. The relationship between different substances here, the first one is the qi and blood. Qi is the commander of the blood. What does it mean? It's the qi. God generates blood. Where the blood come from? From the qi. We have discussed quite a few times that where does blood come from? From Huang Di Neijing. The middle jump absorb qi and qi. the and transfer to the heart. The heart changes the qi into red color. The red color stuff we call them blood. So from this process, we will see where the blood comes from on the qi. The second is the qi promotes the circulation of the blood. In order to move the blood, what we need is the qi. The qi is yang. It's the one to move. We need the qi to promote to, to move the blood. So that's the, the second meaning of the commander. The third is the qi controls the blood. What does it mean by the qi controls the blood? We actually discussed, we actually have talked before. In order to get the blood to make the blood move in the vessel, the blood is something move in the vessel, they should not move out of the vessel. So that's the actually the balance between promote and control. The qi helps the blood to move smoothly, the qi also control to limit the blood in the blood vessel. So here, from the qi to the commander of the blood, this is the direct translation from Chinese. It means the qi is the qi. The first one, the first is the qi need to provide or need to offer enough blood. The qi need to generate enough blood for the circulation. The second is the qi need to improve the circulation to help the flow to move. The third is the qi need to limit the flow within the blood vessel. They should not move out of the blood vessel. Once they move out of the blood vessel, we call it blood stasis. Or static blood, it becomes the pathological situation. Okay. So the first is the qi is the commander of the blood. Second, the blood is the mother of the qi. The mother of the qi, in Chinese theories, in acupuncture theories, we always use this common phenomenon in our society to describe the relationship between organs, between different substances, such as in five elements. We also say the mother, the, the mother elements, the sun elements. Here we also use the blood as the mother of the qi. So the blood is the mother of the qi. Blood is the carrier of qi. Or we have mentioned quite a few times. I said the blood is the vehicle for the qi movement. So wherever the the qi need to move, the blood need to carry the qi. The same as the baby, the baby needs to move, the mother needs to carry them. So that's why we said the blood is the mother of qi. The blood also can supply the qi with the nutrition. So the qi, in order to function, they also need the nutrition to benefit, to tonify the qi. What can benefit, what can tonify the qi? It's the blood. So for these two, it's very similar. The, the baby gets the nutrition from the, the, the mother, get the food, get the milk from the mother, and the mother can carry the baby. That's why we say the blood is the mother of qi. So from here, it's, the blood can carry is the physical of qi. The blood can 
nourish the qi, benefit the qi. So these are the two relationships between qi and blood. Briefly, blood qi is the commander of the blood. Blood is the mother of qi. So if in the test I ask you what's the relationship between qi and blood, you should explain well for these two clause. And also you need to explain in details qi. What does it mean by qi is the commander of the blood? What does it mean by the blood is the mother of qi? If you only write these two sentences, it's not enough to explain. You need to tell me what does it mean clearly for the command of the blood or the, for the mother of qi. The relationship between qi and body fluids. Qi produces the body fluids, prepare body fluids, confine the body fluids. These are actually very similar for with the the blood. The body fluids is in also come from qi. The the movement of the body fluids also need the qi. From the thin qi move the qi. the body fluids upwards, or from the long qi to move the move the body fluids downwards to descend or disperse is from the qi. So the qi can control the movement of the body fluids and also confine is also very similar to the qi confine the blood movement. The the fluids should not move anywhere. The movement should move to a certain area. For instance if the Qi lost the function of confining the body fluids. The patient may be sweating too much or they have no sweat. For instance, in for in some condition, patients have high fever and have a very dry skin, they don't sweat. This the, the dysfunction of qi confining abnormal function of qi confining body fluids or someone they sweat too much or spontaneous sweat or nice sweat that the qi lost the control of the body fluids so the qi need to control them the body fluid is the carrier of qi so the same as what we said before the body fluid is a is a vehicle of the qi movement Body fluids also can generate the qi, can carry, can provide the nutrition for the qi. The essence and blood, the third relationship. The essence and blood is they can be mutually transformed into each other. The reason why is the essence is from the qi, from the middle jaw. So they have the same source where they come from, the blood and the essence. They also have the same function. The essence and the blood have the same function of nourishing, nourishment. In the blood store in the in the liver. The blood store in the liver and then can have the flow of the blood in the body with the function of the spin function to con control the flow. The blood store in the liver and the it's actually from the kidney essence. So for the reason why we're going to focus, we, we mentioned this is because if someone got excellent deficiency, 
you know, kidney iron deficiency or the other iron deficiency, or some weaker patient, how can we benefit the essence? Apart from benefiting the essence directly, you also can benefit the blood. Also, in this kind of patient, someone got def def deficiency essence, they always will have the accompanying symptoms of deficiency blood. So they always happen together. That's why we always focus on both in the treatments. And that's also the most common symptoms in our clinics. The relationship between the blood and body fluids. The blood move in the vessel. The red blood move in the vessel. Once the blood move out of the vessel, it still keep the color as red. So the red body fluid we call blood is supposed to move in the vessel. If the red body fluids move out of the vessel, we call static blood or bleed or in like similar to bleeding condition. But if the blood in the vessel, they move out of the vessel and change to clear color. If they change the color, the one you don't see, or it's clear, it becomes body fluid. So they actually can change into transformed into each other. That's also why if someone got blood deficiency, what do we do first? We actually improve the body fluid. This, this principle can apply in Chinese medicine, also can apply in general medicine. If someone bleeding, all they do is instead of putting the blood from the drips, they also need to put the fluid, increase the fluid because these also they generate each other. If someone got blood deficiency, they also can they also need the body fluid to benefit. Essence qi in the mind. Qi generates the essence. Qi combines the essence. The essence transform into qi. So you see all these functions of qi's function or the relationship is more related to qi's function. The qi can everything is from qi. Human human body is from qi. Essence from qi. Qi also control them to make them function well. Essence can transform into qi. Both qi and essence transform into mind. So in order to have a good memory or you be conscious, to have, to have healthy condition, we, 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 use, we will benefit essence and qi. Mind combines the qi, the essence and qi. As you can see from here, actually it's the the balance we you see all what we talk about here the balance they generate each other they control each other it's very similar at home when you were kids the parents raise the kids as you grow up the parents give you food give you education to raise you but in the meantime the parents control you. The, the parents will tell you not to do this, not to do that. The parents will teach you to how to behave properly. Means that the parents, the parents love you, and the parents also educate you. These, sometimes they limit or they, they don't allow what you, what you like. That's control. They come 
spoil you too much. They also can control you too much. That's been that's unhealthy for the development of a human being. And as here, the qi and the mind, the essence, they help each other. The essence, the qi, they help the mind. The mind also controls the essence and qi. So in until now, we have discussed discuss quite a few theories. We always think the phenomena in our society, in the nature, we learn from the law, from the nature, we learn from the law, from the society, we apply into our practice. That's also why we say it's Chinese medicine or acupuncture is natural medicine. It's not only because we use herbal medicine, we don't use tablets, we don't use we, we use needles only, we don't use chemicals. Actually in Chinese medicine sometimes we also use chemicals. Yes, some herbal medicine are also chemical products. The reason why we say we are natural medicine is because the law we use in Chinese medicine is the is the law for nature. It's not something we created. It's something we learn from the nature and uh, we conclude to the law and then we apply it back to our, our health. So there's a, an assignment here for you. This write a short outline of the relationship between different organs. This is from the pre previous slides. Or you need to refer back to your textbook. It's one or two, two, two or three sample organs and explain how they work together in the physiological and pathological situation. Okay, the deadline will, be, will give you. But don't forget to submit your the assignments for last time. You can submit your this assignment in three weeks. Please write in groups. The, the deadline of this assignment is April, the 9th of April. Okay. We'll see you next time. Thank you.